This video should work for both C and C++. I'll be using C. To follow along with C++, you can replace the GCC with G++ whenever I use it, and your header files from .h to .hpp. Guides for installing the prerequisites are in the description. You need CMake installed and added to path. You need either Make or Ninja installed and added to path, whichever you prefer using. You need a text editor installed. I will be using NeoVim, but VS Code is usually more common and will work for this video. You could also use Emacs or Notepad++, just a simple text editor will do. If you are on Windows, please have a version of MinGW installed and added to path. I recommend MySys2 for both handling MinGW and installing libraries. The boilerplate for this video is in the description as a GitHub repository, so feel free to skip this part if you use the boilerplate. For the boilerplate, I'm going to cd into my programs directory, where I store all of my code, and I'll cd into my YouTube folder. But you can store the project anywhere. This path is just an example of a location I would use. Then mkdir cmake basic setup, which is the name of the project. Now, I'll cd into CMake Basic Setup and open it in NeoVim. Please open this project in the text editor you will be using. I'll create a SRC folder which holds my main.c, and we will have a simple hello world program for the code of the main.c. Next, I'll create CMakeList.txt and open it. For the CMake boilerplate, we will add a CMake version. We will use 3.14.0 because there are some utilities when working on packages we might use in a later video. Most people use 3.10 and 3.10 should work just fine if you want to use it. Now we can define what the project's name is and that is all the boilerplate we will need. For this next part, I'll split NeoVim into two having a cmakelist.txt open on the left and a terminal open on the right. I will be using the cmakelist.txt pane to edit the code as well. To make this easier, I'll be explaining the GCC flags and the matching cmake commands. To start, let's compile main.c with GCC. So the command is gcc-o main src slash main.c. We use the dash "-o", to tell GCC to compile main.c into an executable named main, or main.exe if you are on Windows. The way we do this in CMake is by saying add executable project name, which is CMake basic setup, src slash main.c. Add executable is pretty much the same as dash "-o". We tell CMake the name of our executable, which is our project's name, and the files we want compiled. To build CMake, we first make a build folder. Let's cd into that build folder and run cmake dot dot. If you are on Windows, you will want to specify if you're using make with dash g mingw make files, or ninja with dash g ninja. Then we run either make or ninja, I'm using make. Now, let's imagine the CMake we have is a bit more complex. Let's add a folder called print to our src folder, and inside we will have a header print.h and the c file print.c. A header is basically an outline of a file. In C we use .h, and in C++ we use .hpp to define a header. I suggest using .hpp for C++ even though you can use .h, because some projects you might work with will use both C and C++, and separating the header file extensions will make it much more clear what header you are editing. Here is what the print.h looks like. And our print.c looks like... Lastly, we will modify our main.c to call the print hello function. To compile this with GCC, we add the C file so we can gcc o main src slash main dot c src slash print slash print dot c. 
For CMake, we just add src slash print slash print dot c to the add executable like. And now we can build the CMake again, though because we already generated either a make file or a ninja file, all we need to do is run that. The make or ninja file will update the CMake for us. Next, let's go over including external headers. This is useful if you're trying to include a library's headers or if you want to split up your own headers into their own folder. We will create an include folder and inside a print folder. Let's move our print.h from src slash print slash print.h into the include slash print folder. Now, we need to modify print.c to call print.h from the include folder. So, our print.c's include becomes hash include print slash print.h. And, as main.c already calls print.h from that path, we don't need to modify it. Now, to compile with GCC, we need to pass the dash i flag. The dash i flag acts as if we copied its contents of whatever path we give it, in this case, include, right next to every C or C++ file we are compiling. The command now looks like gcc o main src slash main dot c src slash print dot c dash i include. To do this with CMake, we can say target include directories, our project name, private include. I'm not sure when to use public or private in CMake, so I will link a Stack Overflow explaining what they mean in the description below if you are curious. We specify target as what we want to include the directories to. This means if your CMake builds multiple executables, you can specify different includes for the executables. Now we will include a library. Let's remove the include folder and the print folder from SRC. Now as an example, we will use SDL2. Please use your package manager to install SDL2. If you are on Windows, I have a tutorial linked in the description for using the MySys2 package manager. Let's replace our main.c with a simple SDL2 example. To compile this C code, we can gcc o main src slash main.c dash l sdl2. The dash l flag tells the gcc or g++ compiler that we are using sdl2. If you are on Windows, you might need to add dash l sdl2 main and dash l mingw32. This will tell the GCC or G++ compiler that you are also using a static SDL2 main and you are using mingw to compile your file. Also, if Windows errors with something about a win main, please replace main with win main. Now, for the CMake, we can remove the src slash print slash print dot c, and we can remove the target include directories. The way we can add the dash l flag is with the target link libraries, project name, and then public sdl2. And if you needed sdl2 main, you should add that. And if you needed mingw32 when compiling with GCC, you should add that as well. Something a lot of libraries do is have a CMake package. SDL2 is an example of this, so we can check if SDL2 is installed and pull the library files from there. Most libraries will have documentation for how to use the CMake package. For this example, let's add find package SDL2 required, change the target link library to SDL2 colon colon SDL2. And if you're using SDL2 main, add SDL2 colon colon SDL2 main. And if you need the mingw32, make sure to have that added at the end.
We can also include a library as a subdirectory. For this example, I'll use my library Archaeus. Let's change main.c to look like Now, we will make a lib folder to store the library's code. We want to include Archaeus as a subdirectory, so let's init git and we can pull the, it as a submodule. Git init, git submodule add, and then the URL, and then lib slash arc. Then git submodule update dash dash init dash dash recursive. This should pull all the code down. The reason we're using this as a submodule, and the reason I'm using Archaeus for this example, is if we want to edit the code, let's say I'm working on Archaeus and I want to change the code as I'm working, it's much easier to use a library as a submodule than to install it every time, change the code, and install it again. We can now modify the cmakelists.txt to look like we remove the find package and add add subdirectory lib slash arc where our folders are, and then change sdl2 colon colon sdl2 to our library's name, which is archaeus underscore standard. Please keep in mind that sometimes when using either a package or a submodule, you may need to add target include directories in order to be able to find the headers, as well as you may need to add more to target link libraries. You can check the documentation of the library you're trying to use um, for which to do. Throughout this video, you may have noticed errors popping up. The way I usually fix this is by using Clang D for my IntelliSense and adding this one line to my cmakelists.txt. Set cmake export compile commands on. Now there shouldn't be any error messages in our main.c. And now to show that IntelliSense is working, I'm going to add something that should throw an error. Please let me know if you'd like to learn how to make a CMake package. I don't have a perfect method for this, but I do know mostly what I'm doing. And because I can't find any good videos or documentation for how to make a package, I'm happy to make a video even though I'm not confident my way is the best way. If you run into any issues or errors, my Discord and Matrix chats are in the description below. I'm not good at answering YouTube comments. Thank you for watching.